We're having so much fun here. I, I really would like CES to never end, and I think it could never end. We could be doing this for about two months, just interview after interview after interview. It's just awesome. This is your live continuing coverage of CES 2015. We're at the Innovation Pavilion at the Sands Expo for CES. This is their new innovation space for wearables, innovation, uh, it's for 3D printing, it's for connectivity, it's for home automation and startups. It's really, really awesome and it's really exciting to be here. This is Be Terrific. We have our live daily show returning Monday at 4 p.m. Eastern every day from our studios. We have guests on. That's the Michael Arts' show. We have guests in studio and via Skype. And so don't miss out on that. Of course, you can download our app, app.beterrific.com. You're watching on beterrific.com. You're also watching on planet5d.com. And of course, livestream.com. We're featured right now on livestream, which is pretty awesome and pretty amazing. Um, and, uh, and that's how we're streaming. We're streaming on livestream. Uh, in addition to that, I wanted to tell you that we're also on extremekids.com. And that's an awesome site. And don't forget, you can join the chat and the conversation, ask questions of our guests by going to our IRC chat, which is either under our player on beterrific.com slash live or on our, uh, uh, under our player on planet5d.com. You can connect with us at beterrificTV on Twitter and Instagram. All right, our next guest is John from 3DP Unlimited. 3D printers, large format, print really big stuff uh, and, and at reasonable prices. You can also print really small stuff. This is what a normal 3D printing looks like right. um, out of a desktop 3D printer. You guys also printed this as well, though. That's Welcome, by the way. Thank yeah, you very much for coming nice here. Nice beer. So this is what you would normally print out, uh, uh, maybe yeah. a little bit bigger. You could maybe go a little bit bigger than this on a regular uh, maybe desktop. Maybe a little right? bit bigger. You yeah. know, this is typical. Uh, but imagine a printer that could print something. Is this a large chess piece, by the way? What is yes, this? Yes, it is. Okay, uh, it's a king like you. It's for you. Oh, uh, thank you very much. <laughs> I like that. No, it, imagine being able to print something as large as three foot by three foot yeah. by almost two foot. Wow. So now all of a sudden, in a single piece, whether you're printing a chair whether you're printing uh, some piece of uh, uh, industrial design or even something that you might wear. And so uh, the, the potential for 3D printing has just gotten big. 36 inches by 36 inches by 24 inches. Uh, approximately, yeah. yes. What do you got here? I mean, I love cars and speed and motorcycles, and I, it looks like we've got a gas tank of a motorcycle right here. Well, here's an example. You know, it, it's one thing, an analogy that someone shared with me is to go ahead and print a, something for your dollhouse, it may yeah. look right, but when you put it in your living room, it looks bad. People want things to scale. Right. And so the ability to go ahead and do design and validate that it meets the aesthetics, meets the, you know, the, the wants, the wishes of your customer base, uh, that's what 3D printing enables in this large format at under $20,000 as opposed to a historical threshold of a quarter million. So what's really cool about this too is you've taken it a step further, you've given it a paint job, so this actually looks like um, a, a motorcycle gas tank, so you can get the full effect and the full feel, or if you wanted to put this in a showroom or in some kind of display, you don't actually have to put a bike there, you can put, or, or, or the parts of a bike, you can actually put a 3D printed one, which will save a lot of money and time, and, and really that's where the key for 3D printing, I think, is, is, is money and time in prototyping. You're absolutely right. Uh, no one can afford to introduce an Etzel, right? It's got to be on target. And uh, in order to go and get that validation... Uh, you went it, back into the tank for the Etzel. <laughs> Only car guys I, I like guess, me would know about that. I guess I just uh, you know, dated myself. I, I'm just going to say, if people didn't know, it was a dog. <laughs> All right? It was a car, but it was a dog. It was a dog <laughs> of a car. At least it wasn't a horse and buggy. Right. At least it wasn't a horse and buggy. A horse and buggy might have been better. They break down less. <laughs> All right. So uh, the idea is right. The, the car company can't afford to have another Etzel. The, the, the motorcycle company needs to be able to make sure that everything works, fits, all that stuff, so you prototype on the 3D printer. But it's not only the large companies. But how do you paint like that? I mean, this is, I, it, when you walked up, I was like, is he bringing a gas, a real gas well, tank? I don't understand. Well, it's wonderful. Uh, the same technologies that are used at your scratch and dent place, where they use a little bit of body putty, some primer and paint, allow you to go ahead and get something that is truly, uh, you know, fo realistic to the, the use case. You know, you can imagine uh, if you're going to go ahead and invest, you know, significant dollars, billions in a next generation product, it's got to be right. Yes, absolutely. I agree. Um, and I know that NASA uses 3D printers and SpaceX and all these companies are using them and, and smaller companies that make smaller products. And it's great. I mean, everybody you talk to here seems like they're prototyping on 3D printers. In fact, we had a company come on before 
uh, and they said that they, they, they actually make the uh, sun socket, and uh, it's Aspect Solar, and they were talking about how they make all this stuff, and they have things. They would love your printer, I think, because they told their engineer to go around and, and check out 3D printers. we got to hook them up with you because they have um, not only this energy bar, the 250, but they have other battery things that are 1,500 watt hours of power that are, you know, maybe a, a foot and a half or mm -hmm. two feet tall, maybe even, yeah, about two feet tall. And we had it on set. And maybe they need to prototype how to do something with that or how to make a new one or something sure. like that. And that would be great for them. Well, what's really interesting, because the price points have come down, it's not just Fortune 1000 companies that are using this. Right. Uh, we well, 3D printing's been around for a long time. 30 years. Yeah. It's just been maybe not uh, within reach for I, a lot of people. I remember seeing it for the first time. I, I was doing a story, I've been a journalist a while, uh, and I was doing a story on a technical high school, an alternative technical high school, and they took me in the back and showed me the 3D printer they had. Somehow they had raised the money for it. It took up an entire room. It printed something this size, and it was like, you know, I don't know, probably $300,000. Um, it was unbelievable, and it took forever to print, but I was like, whoa, that's so cool. And they kept going, it's printing something like this, and, you know, I just see, like, it, it just started. Well, I've already convinced you I'm old because yeah. I brought up the Etzel, but uh, imagine prototyping was the first place that printing was used. Yeah. You know, so engineers that would be using CAD software. But what's interesting is there's a whole new segment that's starting to use the technology, uh, whether it be graphics related for set design, costuming, uh, things related to art, furniture. So it, it's not just for big, expensive product developments, it's for a lot of personalization. Uh, and an example would be, you know, imagine you had a child who had scoliosis where their, their back was curved. In the past, you'd have to go through a, a bracing and a casting process that no kid would want to go through. Imagine being able to scan the kid and be able to go ahead and make a brace that was custom to them and make it fun. And I think that's terrific. And also, we, we talk about uh, prosthetics as well for 3D printing. Uh, when I look at some of the desktop 3D printers, I'm like, yeah, I mean, a, it, it works and it's affordable and it makes it more affordable by having a desktop one. But I, wouldn't we be better using a larger format 3D printer for that stuff? Because then you could actually print a leg or you could print an arm, um, not just fingers. Uh, and it's it's all great. It's all great stuff. I'm not knocking it. I'm just saying this is a great use for a large scale 3D printer. Uh, you know the the entree of desktop style uh, printers has been wonderful because it's it's given visibility to the technology, and it's kind of like a point and shoot camera where somebody starts off with with something, but then they want to progress on, and that's exactly what we're seeing is uh, people who want to go ahead and have that utility because uh, so many people uh, have outgrown the, the size limits of some of their desktops. Right, right. You know, the people in the chat room are asking, they're, they're loving this, they're asking how long would it take to print something like this out, and they've got one other question behind that. Okay, it's a function of how solid the object is. This is pretty solid. Uh, this one's about, uh, it's called 20% infill. Oh, really? Let yeah. me feel this. It yeah. feels like it's a it's lot got a, more it's got fill. A, oh my God, oh, it's, it's, this is 20%? Yeah. Oh, wow. All it's right. got so a lot of honeycomb it... inside of it. Wow. It's got a how very long... thick shell yeah, because is... uh, to do the sanding wow. and secondary processing. Uh, how long would it take to print this one out? As, as you hold it right there, it was approximately 200 hours. 200 hours? 200 hours. Wow. So in order to do that, can you imagine starting to print and having it fail after it was 180 hours into it? Yeah. You need reliable equipment, you right. need accurate equipment, and that's some of what we've done is brought that in an affordable fashion. Yeah, I couldn't imagine. Uh, 200 oh. hours is, uh, is over three weeks. It's, it's, it's like a yeah. month. Well, the machines don't sleep. So no, you can I go know. I'm, I'm saying I'm giving people an idea of the work time. It would of, be about well, yeah. you know about eight hours, about eight business days. Eight business days, um, yeah. and and a month for the working person. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> exactly. That, that's the real comparison. This is, is so what would it take otherwise? Right. Eight business days. You you print the whole thing, and then it and then you paint it in in a couple of hours, probably. Yeah, it's pretty that, awesome. This is really awesome, um, and it really helps out people. I like that. So eight business days, you could print a leg. Or yeah, absolutely. Great. Or, or some new furniture. Great stuff. Um, and, and so then they wanted to know, how much would this cost to print? We got the printer now. How much does it cost to print Th that? That is awesome. We believe in open source. Mm -hmm. So we're leveraging materials in the open market as opposed to controlling the consumable. What you see right here is about $200 worth of materials. Some of the traditional approaches to this would be 20 times that. 
So $4,000 of material versus 200. Excellent. So that's a really important part of what we're trying to do. Uh, you, you, you couldn't do that with metal, especially you're talking about the labor and the time and all that stuff. To make this would cost a fortune. No. And, and then you talk about even 3D printing it in another method. Now you're talking about something very affordable, yeah. 200 bucks. Uh, that, that is terrific. I mean, you, there are some 3D printers that will sell this for $200 um, or, or tell sure. you that it's going to cost you $200 to do this or, or about $50 of material. So that's terrific. Um, I really like that. What about uh, the ability to actually uh, make all sorts of different things, all different parts? Like if you could not stop at the gas tank, you could make the tubes, couldn't you? Yes, in fact, one of the other things that's exciting about going open, and I'm going like, to say things yeah. like Android and that type of thing, at a materials level, imagine a material that's hard, yeah. but then you want to go ahead and have some parts, maybe you're making uh, a chair, you want some parts that are soft. Uh, the avail availability of different materials is terrific. Materials with copper in it. Materials really? with wood in it. How about flexibility? Fle wood, Fle wood? How could you have materials with wood in it Absolutely. through a 3D printer? Absolutely, they put, they put little pieces of pulp in the plastic and then it gets uh, extruded right into the shapes you see here. And you can get flexible too. And flexible. What about, uh, what about how, uh, how you would create this? Like do you have to know CAD to create this or can I take a scanner and scan a, a, a bike seat or can I uh, even, do, I mean how would you do it? Do you have to know CAD? Three different ways. Yeah. Historically you would have an engineer who used CAD but there is so much 3D software for graphic artists because they're going ahead and making a face, a costume. Once you get a 3D file, whether it be from a CAD or from a, a more of a graphic related uh, modeling, you're able to go ahead and convert it. And then the third way is the one you described where you scan it and then it will go ahead and give me the information I need to print it. And what about uh, pulling stuff from like uh, some of these networks online that everybody posts their stuff up on? Sure. Or like I have this idea that you know one day the knob for my stove is going to fall off, and instead of having to wait to get the stove company to send me a new knob, I can take their schematics print that they'll provide, print a new one, and I have at least a stove knob until they send me the new one. Uh, absolutely, it's starting to happen right now, right. especially when you get into antique cars. Sure. This oh, old wow. thing keeps coming up. Yeah, but, well, uh, I love cars. We could talk antique cars all day. We're going to be debuting a new show called Garage Queen, <laughs> where we take antique cars that have been beautifully restored and that never get driven. They get polished all day long. We roll it out of the garage. Could you imagine trying to get a part from for a car that was built in the early 1800s? No. I, I uh, broke a clutch. Uh, I broke a pin on a clutch pedal for a 1974 Ferrari Dino. Uh -huh. um, yeah, that was not fun night. Well, but maybe you had a chance to go to Italy to, to replace it. I didn't have a chance to go to Italy, <laughs> and the owner was not very happy with me. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it wasn't my fault, I swear. Because you, it was like a, by the way, it was like a $1,500 pin. That, it was like a piece of metal. <laughs> I believe like $1, you. All right, you've been awesome. 3DP Unlimited. Thank you, John, for coming on. Johnny, be good. It. I oh. really appreciate oh, really that. I really appreciate and, it. And uh, we've had a lot of fun. It's grand scale. This is large yes. 3D printing and it's definitely necessary and needed. Not necessarily for everybody, but it's needed for a lot of things and it's great. I love it. Um, and it's great for prototyping and saving money and time and all that. By the way, we stream, we reach you. You're an amazing audience. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for your amazing feedback. Please keep it coming. Keep watching. Tap the person next to you. Tell them about Be Terrific. Tell them to be watching and text your friends. Tell them Watch, call your friends, just help spread the word. Together we can be the biggest coverage here at CES. I'm a little competitive, but I just also want to show the world that positive coverage can get out there, that inspirational coverage can get out there, and, 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 and that people want it. So just let people know. We need awareness, we need to let people know. We're doing that ourselves too, and in addition, we're spending time and money and effort marketing. We have great marketing partners, and we have great distribution partners, and I want to tell you about one of those right now, Amp Live. Amp Live is amazing. They help us reach you and get to you and help you find out about us. They're phenomenal. They do such a great job. We love them. They're really amazing, and I can't say enough good things about them. So if you're doing a corporate event, you want to do a live stream and get more people to know about it, or you just have to spread the word about your product or company or anything, you got to hook up with Amp Live. They'll take care of you for live video. They'll take care of you for non-live video and all sorts of other stuff. AmpLive.us. That's where you're going to go. Tell the boys Be Terrific sent you. And uh, listen, if you 
just want to uh, not tell them you don't have to, but tell them Be Terrific sent you. you got to go to AMP Live. I'm Michael Arts. This is CES Live. You're continuing live coverage of CES from the Sands Convention Center here in Las Vegas, Nevada. Your Be Terrific live coverage. We'll be back right after this. Stay with us.